Memphis. It's been uh, about three years uh, with the Allocraft Bass Pro or the Pocket Rocket as I've uh, labelled it. And um, yeah, I thought I'd do a, a recap video and how everything's gone, how I've liked it, what I haven't liked, um, what's up and coming. But uh, yeah, I'll do a bit of a run through. I'm here at Windermere. I've got. Um, sort of a couple of hours to spare before I can get out for a pre-fish so I thought I'd uh, cut a few videos and uh, yeah this will be a three year review on the Allocraft Bass Pro 498. So we're back, I uh, lost light yesterday so I want to talk about the 498 and uh, things that I love and things that haven't gone right and there's not many of them I can tell you. So this is, as I said yesterday, a third year review. So uh, I've had this boat for three years now, fished uh, from Queensland to Victoria in every way, shape or form. I love it as a whaler boat, um, you know, that little... Uh, skinny water stuff, river launches, I can do all of that in this, but I can still be competitive in a bass tournament. Um, I'm here at Windermere, as I said yesterday, and we're having a bit of fun with um, yellow belly fishing, but uh, while we're waiting for pre-fish day to start, I thought I'd cut this video. So from when I originally bought it, a couple of upgrades that I have done is I've upgraded the the XI5 that I started off with to the Lowrance Ghost and absolutely love it. Beast of a uh, beast of a motor and done a really good job on that. Um, I've mounted two sounders up the front instead of the one and I've got my live sight pole that works uh, directly off a pedal instead of uh, a hand pole because I like to have my hands free to fish. So uh, that's some of the upgrades that I've done at the front of the boat. She's a bit dirty at the moment, um, but that's only because I've just done a seven hour drive up to Windermere. Um, yeah, from the boat itself, I've added these um, bars, which go into the T-slot track. Uh, they're really good for one, getting in and out of the boat over the guards. So there's one on each side. Uh, I've mounted the sounder off this side, off this one, taken it off the console itself. And I've put rod holders on these for when I'm trolling and stuff like that. So you can see the, um, the grab handles or the bars. Uh, I would have loved to have painted them black to match. But um, yeah, look, they do help with getting in and out of the boat, which is really, really cool. So um, they're, they're a must-have as far as I'm concerned. So one of the things that impressed me the most about this boat was the fact that I could get the storage that I needed. Um, this boat has massive storage for a little boat, 498, just on that five metre mark. And uh, look, I'm here early, so I'm going to do a bit of a boat clean while I'm here. So I'm going to grab all the stuff out of the boat, lay it down beside, and you'll see what I can fit underneath the deck of this boat. So as you can see, this one is not quite full. I'll go around to the other side. This one is full, and of course the rod locker, I will show you how many rods I fit in there as well. Right, okay, now I'll go for the rod block. Right, so now we're going to do the rod block. As I said, these bars help for getting in and out. So that's 11 rods. I could possibly fit another, say three or four rods in if I wanted to.
rod straps on both sides. The same on the back. I've got rod straps on both sides, so the co-boater can lay their rods nice and flat. So the storage box behind the driver's seat here is my junk drawer, which prop spanners, spare everything, that's all just in a box um, that goes into that side. This side box, I put a foam lid in because it's foam filled underneath it. And uh, that is my food drawer, drinks, food, stuff like that. Handy little storage behind the seats for the net, so the net's always out of the way. Goes in the slot behind the seats. I also carry my live well net in behind there as well. Live well comes with a removable divider. Um, in the top, I am going to foam fill that at some stage, but at this stage I've never lost a fish, so I haven't had to worry about it. And it also comes standard with pump in, pump out, and aerator. Okay, you can see here that I've got a 24 volt, 75 amp hour FPV lithium battery, which runs the Ghost up the front. Then across here, you'll see that I've got a 12 volt, 25 amp hour uh, hybrid cranking battery from FPV, and all that does is does the cranking of the motor. And beside that is my house battery, which is 110 amp hour um, lithium battery, and uh, all together runs off the DC to DC charger. So if the motor is running, that charges the house battery. On the back here, I've put a jacking plate. Now, this jacking plate is not nothing to do with getting extra speed. I'm not a not a speed freak. But what it does is it allows me to run uh, quicker in shallower water, and in six and eight knot zones, the front of the boat doesn't stick up in the air. So you can see there that it's a six inch lift, and it's about a six inch um, setback. So that's the jacking plate. So you see here at the console I'm running a Elite FS9 and up the front I'm running a HDS Live 12 and an Elite FS9 up the front. Now I'm a big fan of the one boat network so these all link together and I can run live site off any of the uh, units that I want to but the main thing is everyone knows me I love my music and uh, through the sonic hub everything plays off the one unit i'm running gopro on the yolo stick that i got from um, steve morgan abt tournament boats i think it is um, it's extendable but i run it off the back most of the time i will get a mounting point at some stage put it up on the console just to get the front of the boat but at the moment I can run the GoPro off the back and then up the front here. I just have my control sitting beside my sounder here. So all I've got to do is push the button for it to record. I have it in hindsight all the time. Saves with editing. The things that I do and don't like about the Bass Pro 498, well, there's actually not that much um, that's gone wrong with it to give you any sort of really bad reports on it. Um, most of the stuff that has gone wrong with it were, were definitely my fault. But um, yeah, I think uh, one thing that I will change going forward is when I changed over, first changed over to lithium, uh, I was running a house battery that wasn't charging and I had my jacking plate uh, hooked to the house battery, not to the start battery. So pulled up the ramp, jacking the jacking plate wouldn't go up once the house battery was flat so that's one thing I would change. Um, empty first run, uh, very lightweight, uh, maximum speed was uh, 92 kilometers an hour GPS through the sounder and uh, I haven't been able to achieve that since obviously putting all the weight in the boat. Three up uh, the weekend before last at Glenbourne uh, with full live well, everything else, we were, we were maxing out at around that 70k an hour mark, which is, you know, pretty handy for a boat of this size.
I am running a 25 pitch prop. I'll put some photos in on that as well. I've done a lot of bling modifications to this boat. Uh, lighting, which I'll wait until it gets dark later and show you all the lighting. Uh, but I've done the red ambient lighting uh, to save your night eyes. I've got some bling lighting on the back to make it look cool when you're running around at night time and stuff like that. But in general, um, out of the packet, this is quite a good boat and you don't need all that bling on it. Being extremely critical um, of any small boat is sounder mounting. With all the big bass boats in the market, you get sounder mounting, uh, flush mount front and rear. Obviously, uh, there's no flush mount option on this unless you want to go a 7 inch or a 5 inch screen in the console. I'd love to be able to do a 9 inch screen flush mounted in the console. Um, but hey, you know, you, with all the mounting options you've got these days, you can put them on the side. One of the big things I was scared about is going from the big fiberglass boat. I had a 21 foot nitro with the 250 Verado on the back. One of the things I was scared about is going back to an aluminium boat, uh, rough ride, you know, wet ride, all that sort of stuff that you get told. Well, to be brutally honest, the ups far outweighed the downs on the Bass Pro, it, it is just phenomenal. Uh, we were at Grafton with that big wind, it was choppy, it was hard work. I will uh, put some postage of how bad that was. And not saying that the Bass Pro handled it with ease, but it handled it. I would never felt unsafe. Um, it was rough and it was hard work, and you did have to drive it properly. Uh, I would have loved the 21 foot boat in that situation, but that is the only time in the three years where I have thought, oh shit, the big boat would have been an advantage. Where I was fishing on that comp, I was way up the back in the skinny water um, where the Bass Pros really, really come into its own. Um, so weather-wise, splash-wise, everything else, I, it's, I can't uh, recommend the Bass Pro to be a good equivalent to a fiberglass. I'm not going to say it's better and I'm not going to say it's worse. I mean, it's horses for courses. I fish in my whaler, which is, you know, a lot of three foot water with stumps. Um, and that's why I got rid of the fiberglass boat. I can't say that I've uh, ever wanted to go back. We have done some modifications uh, to the newer hulls over this one through stuff that I've noticed. Uh, one of them, and I'll put a cutaway photo here, one of them is the footwell where your feet go. Uh, there was no footwell, so you couldn't run a hot foot when I bought this boat. Uh, which has all been modified. Uh, Bill Laderman's boat's going to have a hot foot in it, so we'll be able to do some car comparison videos with that. And um, they've got a new hatch up the front, and I'll show you where that goes in another photo as well. But uh, that hatch up the front allows you to mount your electric motor battery up the front and don't have to run all your wires down to the back. One of the big keys, uh, which I really, really love, is that all the storage under the front is the same as a fiberglass boat. It's all lipped storage, so it's all waterproof storage, so none of my gear gets wet underneath the front of the boat. I've had um, situations where the, where the waves, are, you know, you're fishing on the electric and the electric's coming in and out of the water and you've got uh, waves breaking over the front and all my gear stays dry inside the boat itself, which is really cool for an aluminium boat. I don't know of too many other aluminium boats on the market which have dry storage uh, like the Allocraft does. Our maximum rating of this boat is 115 horsepower. Uh, you can't use the Honda I believe because it's too heavy. Everything else is on the market. Uh, my local dealer, Lee Mark Marine, he was a Mercury dealer so I went in and seen them. They did a fantastic deal on the Pro XS so I'm running a Pro XS. Uh, 115 with a CT box, um, but it would it would run. I, I reckon it would run, you know, on a 75 if you're on a budget. But in general, uh, I think you know you, you'd want to be around that 100 horsepower. So, oh, we've got a boat coming in here, so I don't know what the noise will be like. Somebody's unhooking the caravan. I've been here by myself all day until now. Um, another bonus of the Allocraft is how light it is. Um, to tow to travel I uh, did the trip to Grafton from Wodonga and the fuel economy on the Amarok was I think it was uh, 11 just between 11 and 12 litres per hundred uh, 
Sorry about that. So uh, the weight of the Bass Pro is awesome. On the towing, I've just recently got rid of the um, the van, gone to an Amarok, done the big trip up to Grafton, and you don't even know it's behind there. You're not slowing down on the hills or anything like that, but um, I think somewhere between 11, I've got a photo, I'll put it up, but I think it was between 11 and 12 litres per 100, towing the fully stacked boat, all of my camping gear uh, to Grafton back. So, um, yeah, it was a great trip. Uh, very little fuel stops. I think by the time I, I did uh, Wodonga to Glenbourne, fish the comp, Galvo's comp at Glenbourne, then up to Grafton, and I still was able to manage without speeding uh, 100 kilometres an hour for the whole trip, um, doing that 110 zone all the way up to Hume Highway. So uh, fuel economy is absolutely awesome on the tow vehicle but it is also awesome on the boat um, it's a it's a great boat for fuel if you want to run it around at normal revs um, you get days out of the fuel tank if you want to run it full noise like any boat you're going to go through the only time I really run it at full noise is at the start line when we take off each morning the rest of the day about three quarter throttle around that four to four and a half thousand revs and yeah I fill up once you know, once every two comps, basically. So the fuel economy on it is great. Um, going into that, the fuel tank itself is a 67 litre tank. Um, I did a run uh, pre-fish and, uh, and comp day. The, the third day got called off, of course, at Grafton. But uh, in the two days, I was doing a 32k run each way. Um, so fuel economy is really good in that. But one downside of it is that the mounting place, which I'll show you in a photo as well, of the uh, breather, um, if you do overfill it, it will come out the breather. Um, I'm not sure if that's a thing, common thing in all tinnies. So I've worked out that, yes, it's a 67 litre tank, but if I put 60 litres in it, it doesn't overflow. If I put anything over 60 litres in it, it will overflow. So realistically, it, is, it does only have a 60 litre tank. Uh, Mercury to the smart gauges as well I don't rely on the old fuel gauge either so I've got all of my fuel stats so every time I fill it up I reset um, the Mercury smart craft gauges and I know exactly how many K's and how many litres I've used and what I've got left um, so for a you know whole whole boat network situation I've got gauges through all the sounders, I've got gauges through the Mercury Smart Craft and I know exactly to the litre how many litres I use on any given trip. I'll put some stats up, um, I've got some photos of, of what I was using at um, Grafton, um, some screenshots, I'll put them up there as well. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape by anything all it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity it's mind over everything ah the glories of uh, running cameras listen I filmed a um, what would you call it an exit video while I was at Windermere and unfortunately I didn't plug the microphone in so um, old fool me and technology I've done it again but uh, look, if you got this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, I just want to do a little recap on the 498 and um, yeah, we'll go from there. I suppose the first question I wanted to answer is, um, the review is a bias. Well, no, it's not. It's an honest review, but I have to um, tell you that I am sponsored by Bluefin. Um, so, you know, that's apparently the, the done thing when you're doing a review video, so that point done. Um, would I buy one 
again, yes, I'm contemplating buying the newer model. I'm thinking about uh, trading this one in on the new model. So yes, I would buy it again. Do I suggest it for everyone? No, I don't suggest it for everyone. It's a horses for courses. But really look into how much a build would cost you to build a boat and look at these boats. They are sensational. They are really well built. Um, I've had my boat out in some of the roughest weather and yeah, very, very well built. Would I recommend it? Yes. Would I recommend you buy one? Do your homework and see if it's exactly what you want. It is the ultimate inland water weapon. I don't care what anyone says, it's the best boat I've owned to do everything I can do. If you want a big boat to go outside and fish in the bays and that, well, it's not for you. If you want a super fast boat doing over 100 k's an hour, it's not for you. So if you fish big water all of the time, it's probably not for you. But as a multitask boat, it is the best I could find and I am super happy with it. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I know it's a long video, but I thought I'd do it justice. Uh, three year review on the Bass Pro 498. Absolutely love the boat. Um, but once again, thanks for your support. Don't forget to like, uh, tag, share, do all that social media stuff for me. It'll be great. I'll put some links to websites so you can look them up. The um, Allocraft, um, all of that link stuff I'm not good at, but I will put it up. But once again, just thanks for watching and uh, yeah, till the next one.